Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, ArcGIS Pro 2.6. This was just released last month. Um, I would not characterize this as a big release. I guess, you know, it's incremental. Uh, each release, which is happening about every six months, we add additional uh, functionality into the mix. I would say that this release, um, pretty much everything that you may have seen in ArcMap has made it over into the new um, Pro architecture, which is now five years old. Uh, so uh, most of you should be working in Pro at this point. Uh, there's a few exceptions, uh, and for the most part, uh, I think all of our classes that you get online are pretty much pro-oriented. So I'm just going to hit on a few highlights. Um, there's just way too much to cover. Um, hit a few things and do a little demo. So in terms of new uh, innovation, uh, I'll start with the voxel. So a voxel is a volumetric pixel, or that's the way I describe it, so it's sort of a 3D a volume uh, version of uh, rasters. Um, I've got, I'll kind of defer, I've got a little demo that probably explains a little better. Uh, Non-spatial objects, so one thing that's been lacking in Pro that was introduced is the ability to put graphics uh, on the map and in the layouts, and so that's been a uh, Taken care of interactive suitability analysis. So uh, there is um, this is a more flexible environment than what you might have seen in ArcMap uh, previously with regards to suitability analysis. You can do um, a lot more uh, what if scenarios and manipulation of the charts and the graphs and see how that impacts the map display. Uh, link analysis is something that we've never had before, but what this allows you to do is to look for patterns between uh, different points of data. Uh, so this is something entirely new. And 3D mesh manipulation uh, is allowing us to essentially uh, edit uh, on the fly the underlying um, 3D uh, surfaces. So those are kind of big things uh, which uh, we've done. Uh, these are the user enhancements requests. So these are the, the requests that you submit through the ideas arcgis.com, uh, part of the Esri website. And uh, those do get looked at uh, and is actually the biggest driver in terms of what we do with software development. So I would really encourage you to if you've got, got ideas, go ahead and share them with us. And what happens is those ideas get reviewed. People can vote on how significant they are. And um, that really kind of sets out the roadmap for development about what we, what we put our attention to. Um, so really encourage that aspect of it. A few things that I'll uh, point out here, project recovery. So now that if you're working uh, in in Pro, and if you had a power outage or a software bug, <laughs> for some reason the software stopped, you can now set up a um, uh, project recovery uh, scheduler to automatically back things up in your background. And then of course, if you needed to recover, it'll start a dialogue related to that. Uh, charts and dynamic pictures and reports. We've done a lot of work with um, charting and reporting in the last several releases. Um, I would say that our reporting engine isn't, we're not done with it yet. Still a bunch of work going on with formatting, but it's, it's, it's coming along. Uh, unlike in the past, this is a uh, reporting engine that is native to ArcGIS Pro rather than us bringing in a outside report engine technology, which we've done in the past. Uh, this gives us better control on how things uh, interact and, and more tightly uh, integrate it with the rest of our software stack. So uh, it's, you know, uh, uh, like any report generator, 
uh, same basic WYSIWYG sort of arrangements with it. Um, we've also done quite a bit of work with improving uh, connectivity to other business data systems because um, so, uh, quite often these days the GIS does not live in its own island and that you need to be able to connect with other uh, business systems that are within your organization. So we've done quite a bit of work improving those connectivities uh, capability. Uh, save the web map. So now you can directly edit your web maps in ArcGIS Pro and save them directly to um, ArcGIS Online or if you're an ArcGIS Enterprise user, you can save those definitions in uh, the enterprise. So what this allows you to do, it really cuts out um, some of the earlier work where if you were working at a layer that was in a web map, of course you could do that, uh, edit that in Pro. Um, but to actually alter the presentation web map, which is a combination of layers, base map and, and operational layers, um, you had to go into the portals and actually do the editing. And now you can do that from with completely within uh, the ArcGIS Pro environment. And I think that I'll reemphasize sort of the main reason for ArcGIS Pro is it was designed from the get-go to work with web services, which of course is the how ArcGIS Online and Enterprise work. Uh, unlike ArcMap, ArcMap was never designed to work with web services when it originally was the software was developed back in the 90s. And even though you could uh, work with layers inside of ArcMap that were coming from ArcGIS Online, what really was happening is that if you wanted to edit those layers, uh, you would essentially download them in the background into a Scratch geodatabase, make the edits, and then post them back. So that was the, the, the route for doing editing in ArcMap. And it's just a reflection of the fact that ArcMap when we wrote the software originally back in the 90s, there was no such thing as web services. So a lot of what ArcGIS Pro has been about is really to get us from the non-web service world to the uh, web service world, which of course we're using in pretty much everything these days. So that was a real design, fundamental design thing that we do with Pro. Um, and then we've made some improvements to book maps, bookmarks, uh, and number of uh, being able to link from one to another. Uh, some other equivalency items. Again, this is the map graphics capability, which you can do in the map and then also in your layouts. For those of you that have, may have been working with geometric networks inside of ArcMap, uh, we've taken the geometric network technology uh, and kind of split it into two different types of networks. Um, the uh, simplest conversion of a geometric network is to what's called a trace network. So this is the, the technology that um, would allow you to have linear connected features and be able to study flow within those. And that's now part of ArcGIS uh, Pro in the form of a trace network. The other part of traditional use of geometric networks in the ArcMap world was to model utility networks like water and sewer and electricity. And we broke that a couple of years ago into a different sort of network, a specialized utility network, which we call the utility network um, um, model. And on top of that model, we built um, designs for electric and water and sewer and we just added telecom uh, that so if you want to model your computer network you can do that so uh, for those of you who may have been waiting for a simple uh, replacement for geometric networks um, the trace network is is the area to look at for that um, we also made big leaps uh, for the parcel fabric um, in ArcMap, we had a data structure called a parcel fabric. 
And we have a newer one that we introduced last year that's pro-based. And I really wish we had renamed the parcel fabric to something other than parcel fabric uh, for pro because it's dramatically different than what you may have experienced within the ArcMap environment. And so this is really important for local government agencies because they're most important layers that they work and develop is the land records uh, stuff. So uh, with this release, the 2.6 release, I feel all of the functionality that they need to support uh, land records maintenance is in the new parcel uh, fabric for ArcGIS Pro. Um, it is a signif significantly different model than the previous uh, release. So just uh, uh, for those of you working in local government space, this is this is the release to really jump in with this new technology. Uh, vehicle routing problem is part of the network analyst technology. So this is for dealing with multiple uh, vehicles doing multiple delivery stops. And we really hadn't had that flushed out uh, in the previous versions of network analyst. So it's there now. And before I uh, go any further, let's do a little demo. Let's bring up um, a ArcGIS Pro session. So this is uh, 2.6, and what we're going to focus on is one of the new things that we added, which was uh, voxels. So in this case, we're looking at data related to the COVID um, situation. Uh, and this uh, particular data set obviously is focusing on California. And somebody, somebody else built this for me. So what we're going to do here is turn on some different layers. And here we've got um, these are uh, on a per county basis. And basically, these columns represent how well people are doing with um, social distancing. So let me um, change my bookmark here a little bit. Let's see, coastal view, do a little zoom down. And if I, if I look at one of these columns here, um, what you're seeing in terms of colors are representations of, of how well people are social distancing. This comes from a, a uh, data provider called Unicast. And I've got data for a select number of months here. Um, and if I poke at one of these points here, you're going to get a, the grade scale, so like an A through F grading scale for Santa Barbara County on a particular date. And if I poke further up here, it's going to be a, a later date. So um, if I turn on, um, when the stay at home order layer, so you can see that below this um, March 19th, which is when the stay of home order was issued in California, the red down here indicates that people were free, move, freely moving about. Um, so obviously they weren't terribly concerned because we weren't at that point. Um, with what was going on. And you can see as we move up over time, you can see um, improvements in their grade scales. Um, or, so those colors that are you know, dark blue and blue, those are indicating that people are social distancing. So what's interesting about this is if we go back to my um, view here, you can see some patterns showing up. So after the um, social distancing rules went in place, you can see that the coastal communities have generally done a better job than the um, uh, interior counties, um, more red going on. Uh, so that's, that's an interesting pattern that shows up. We can also take a look at um, this with relations to temperature. So here we'll go, um, let me, change my bookmark to Southern California here. 
And we'll go ahead and open our temperature voxel layer and we'll do a, I want to do a slice vertical. Oh, there we go. Okay. So um, what you're seeing here is temperature. Um, and in this case, um, you know, going from uh, temperature over time, right? So everything in the vertical and the Z axis is representing in time. You can see um, how things warmed up over time. So uh, if I do a slice north south here, you can see how things are uh, revealed more closely over time. So if we look right here at one of these, this column on the right, you can see that as things got warmer, people were not doing as good a job with regards to um, being uh, doing social distancing. So that's just a, you know, kind of a quick view of how, um, how the new voxel technology works. Let me go ahead and turn that one off. Uh, a lot of interesting analysis possibilities with that. So with that, let me jump back to my PowerPoint and talk a little bit about where we are with uh, release schedule. So this um, PowerPoint uh, was just prior to the release of 2.6, which happened uh, middle of August, I believe it was. And so in this column here, this is a, a um, kind of a report that we get regularly from software development on what they're working on and when will it be available. So when you read near time, that was for the upcoming release. So this is actually the, the um, functionality that was available with the 2.6 release in August. Uh, so the midterm release will be the next uh, release, which I'm anticipating will be first quarter next year. So yeah, I'll let you take a look through this list. Uh, it, a lot of it is fairly um, sharing oriented um, with the idea of being able to you know, use ArcGIS Pro as your publishing authoring tool and to be able to share things out. Um, and then long term is probably time frame would be July, June, July, August next year. Uh, and these are the things that are, are expected for that. And so lastly, go to open it up for discussions, I guess.